Hello, everyone. Sounds like some of us are calling in from clinic. I love it. <laughs> I guess it's not really morning, is it? It's 100% the afternoon. I just, <laughs> like you said, Alexis, it's been, it's been a long day. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us. I know you all have very, very busy days. Um, so appreciate you being here. Um, for session nine, which is the last session of our third quarter. So pretty, pretty amazing to be at this point. Um, I will go ahead and pass it. And yes, hi, Paula, I see you on there. Um, hi, good morning. Oh, good afternoon. Sorry. <laughs> hi. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I made the same mistake. Um, yeah, we've got a couple people from partnership today, which is wonderful. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I, we can go ahead and I think dig in today's going to be, Eva will lead us through more of the detailed objectives and agenda, but just to give you kind of a heads up, we're going to do some update, like resources and updates and kind of, um, news for you in the, at the top. And then most of today is actually going to be discussion and kind of more problem solving. So, um, get ready for a pretty interactive session. So really excited that you're here. And with that, I'll pass it over to Eva. Hi, everyone. Welcome to session nine. Um, and we just wanted to remind everyone that we are recording this session. It'll be available um, afterwards to refer back to. Um, next slide, please. Um, so if everyone could um, update your Zoom name and include the name of your organization. Um, we uh, are hoping to start with an icebreaker question today. Um, the question is, what would you add to your daily routine if you had an extra free hour each day? Um, and we just want to make sure that this is a really dynamic session, especially since we have a little bit more of a um, smaller group today. Please feel free to unmute, use the chat. Um, raise your hand and um, just really use this space for learning um, and networking. I have a feeling this is a pretty, yeah, answer. yeah, this, this, should we just cancel and we'll just all go to sleep for an hour and a half? Like, I think that maybe that, that's the move with this. With the in method. the spirit of health. <laughs> the Christine can go hiking and the rest of us will go to sleep. Yeah. The room is going to be a 15 minute nap. That's, that's what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> much needed well hopefully you know the weekend soon hopefully everyone will be able to get a nap in sometime soon um <clears throat> we just want to um review our objectives for today um by the end of this session um participants will review the pds pdsa process and um you know determine where you are in that process share it with your peers um identify our priorities for the remainder of the year and then map those priorities to different stakeholders and really identify who may be missing from this group and um, engage in a discussion to determine which supports and stakeholders would be needed to accomplish those prioritized activities. Um, next slide, please. Um, and so just to review today's agenda, um, we're starting out with um, our objectives, going over the agenda, and we'll have some administrative updates. Um, we will also have Samantha providing a recap of um, the in-person uh, session that we had for San Joaquin and Stanislaus counties um, earlier this month. Um, so you'll get a little bit of sense of that. Um, also thinking ahead to our in-person session. Um, and then we'll do a little bit of solutioning along the provider journey. Moving into part two of today's agenda. Um, we will identify priorities, map those priorities to stakeholders, and then have time for a group discussion. And then we'll close out with some planning for session 10, talk about next steps, um, and provide some additional resources as well. So before we get started, um, we have a date for our in-person session. I know there have been a lot of questions about when this was going to take place. It took us a while to find um, a date that worked out um, for all of us involved in planning the session. So it will take place on Monday, October 30th from 12 to 2.30 p.m. Um, at the partnership offices in Reading. Um, we also just want to call out that when you put in partnership into Google, 
there are two different locations. This is the correct one. We'll have lots of opportunities to follow up with session details. We'll just keep that in mind. Um, and this is just kind of a um, broad outline of what the day is going to look like. We're really going to focus on building powerful networks. Um, part one will focus on spotlighting what works in terms of highlighting those local best practices. Um, we'll have time for making connections and networking, um, and then also time to map uh, local resources to local needs. Lunch will be provided, um, and it'll just be a great time to um, get to know each other, spend some time together, share a meal, um, and do some capacity building. Um, we have that RSVP link that we'll drop in the chat, and we'll also follow up um, in emails after the session. So please be sure to fill that out um, and also provide some information about dietary restrictions and things like that. And so um, we just wanted to give a brief recap of an in-person session that we had um, for San Joaquin and Stanislaus counties. Um, some feedback that we got from the group that participated in that convening, 83% um, of participants gained a stronger understanding um, of and connection to key partners. 83% um, received information to improve CalAIM implementation. There was a lot of knowledge sharing um, and peer solutioning during that session. And then 72% identified a test of change to implement during that session. Um, but one of our Northeast participants is also part of the San Joaquin Stanislaus Collaborative and attended that meeting. Um, and so we would love to turn it over to Samantha Earnshaw right now just to give us a recap of um, what that session was like and maybe any takeaways that you had. Thanks, Samantha. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. <laughs> so um, I think... So I'll just jump right in. <laughs> um, summary, it was awesome. The food was good. It was lovely seeing everyone in person, especially the teams, uh, the you guys, Alexis, Gabrielle, Eva, you know, um, seeing people in person. I think for me, the biggest thing was being able to be in person with everyone. I mean, it sounds obvious, but um, we've all leaned on Zooms for efficiency and we're getting the information that, you know, we need to get. But there's definitely something different about doing it in person and being in the room with like minded people. So for me, um, I traveled from my Sacramento office to get to Stockton, which is a bit of a journey. But I will say it was a worthwhile journey. So for any of you folks that are going to be coming from further distances, to get to the in-person uh, coming up in October, I would say make the effort because what I found meaningful was being able to sit with people, find out who the players are on the ground and making it to the meeting to be able to introduce yourself. And the way that the environment was, it was so warm and welcoming. I really give Alexis, you, you and your team kudos on that because immediately you came into the room it was welcoming. I was there by myself and I was like, oh, yeah. and it wasn't, you know, <laughs> you know, you're sitting down and you immediately sitting with other people who are like, we're in this together. We want to do this together where we have the same goals. So um, my, I think my biggest takeaway from it is that it inspired me more because while I see all you inspiring folks on Zoom, I'm in my office, I have a staff member next to me, I'm distracted, I'm halfway listening, but being in person allowed me to be fully immersed in, in what the goals are, in talking with people, in hearing other people's ideas, hearing other people's challenges. We had a session where we had like a problem and solution. They split us up in different sections to talk about things that we're interested in and want to kind of look deeper into. So you had like groups of people where you, you don't feel like you're in the struggle alone. And for me personally, I, you know, my organization was still kind of getting, trying to get a foothold into that area to understand the lay of the land. And it was so nice to see people who are already established in that community who were welcoming 
to newcomers because the ultimate goal is what we're trying to do here, right? And it's going to take every player in the field to, to resolve the issues that we're trying to resolve as a community. And so that was a big takeaway for me was being able to say, this is a community thing. We're not siloed. We can form partnerships. There were a few people there that were talking about collaborative future type partnerships and how we can reach the same goals and have those kind of things. So I was excited about that. Um, and like I said, it was so nice to be able to shake hands with people who are established in the community that I wasn't even aware of. Um, and be able to set up meetings with them. So I have some meetings coming up. <laughs> One is next week with some Stockton folk to see how we can collaborate. Because uh, for me personally, what was important is that we're not stepping on each other's toes to accomplish the ultimate goals, right? So figuring out who, who you are in this community, meaning your organization, who we are in this community, who we're serving, with our special skills, because every single one of us has a, has a unique gift to give, right? That's why we're an established organization or we're, you know, we have something to give. So figuring out your role to be a partner in this is going to be ongoing discussion with people and getting to know people. So I strongly encourage everyone to come who can, <laughs> but I loved it. Um, um, I, I, it sounds so weird, but it gives me hope. Um, it gave me hope to be able to say, okay, I have people who are willing to partner to figure this out. So that was really great. So yay, kudos guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing, Samantha. It was wonderful to see you in person. And I definitely echo your sentiments about how nice it was to be in person and it was a really collaborative environment. So um, we're hoping to bring that spirit into the Northeast in-person session. So, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but please RSVP, I dropped the link in the chat um, and share it with your networks and your colleagues as well. Um, next slide, please. Um, so in this next session, we will um, highlight a few resources and funding opportunities. Um, the first one is, um, highlighting the upcoming ECM and CS provider roundtables through partnership um, over the next few months. And so those dates are noted there as well as the registration links. Um, and we'll drop those in the chat, but you'll be able to access them in the deck after the session. Um, next slide, please. Um, and then Camden Coalition is hosting um, their conference in November, Putting Care at the Center. Uh, they're offering one scholarship per MCP um, that is available for contracted CalAIM partners. Um, it's at the beginning of November from the 1st to the 3rd in Boston. Um, and here you'll be able to see um, the agenda uh, it'll, focusing on leading with lived experience, behavioral health and complex care, um, workshops on a range of complex care and community health topics. Uh, scholarships include uh, free registration for the uh, three days of the conference, hotel, and $400 towards travel expenses, and that's sponsored by the California Healthcare Foundation, and the scholarship information is there, linked there. Um, and then the last resource that um, I'll be highlighting right now is the Equity and Practice Transformation Payment Program um, launched by uh, DHCS uh, for primary care practices. Um, all of the information will be linked there, um, but it's a delivery system transformation to improve health equity outcomes for small primary care providers serving Medi-Cal members. Um, applications are due October 23rd. And um, focus areas are uh, provider-directed payment program, uh, initial planning incentive payments, and statewide learning collaborative. Next slide. And then I'll pass it over to Alexis. Hey, everyone. Um, I am just going to cover two 
quick cheat sheets really fast. Not sure if everyone um, has already had an opportunity to review the CS and ECM cheat sheet that DHCS developed um, back in July at this point. Essentially, the state made a lot of policy revisions and recommendations based upon a lot of the input from stakeholders, on the ground stakeholders that um, provided feedback on their experiences. But the policy guides are a lot to absorb. They're very thick, very heavy, very needed. But essentially, listening to stakeholder feedback, DHCS um, responded by making a cheat sheet. And so just wanted to give everyone a reminder that that cheat sheet is available and that it's linked inside of the slide deck that we're going to drop in the chat for you. And there are three parts to this cheat sheet so that way you can understand the specific area of the policy um, and then how standard the policy is, whether it's low standardization, um, meaning that the plan has flexibility in working with you in that area, or high standardization, meaning that DHCS is really trying to standardize across the state in that area. And then lastly, a summary of the policy, something that's really easy, really easy to understand. Um, simple to read so that way you can review this policy guide as a resource um, for developing workflows and practices. And then secondly, I just wanted to also make sure that everyone knew about the DHCS funding cheat sheet. Um, there have been a lot of questions about what's the difference between PATH and IPP, who can apply for each funding source, what is the timeline, what are the eligibility requirements, and so we also wanted to make sure that we linked that cheat sheet here so you can have access to it when you're reviewing the um, capacity building resources that you need, and you can review this brief document to understand where you can tap into for very specific funding sources. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alexis. That's great. I was like trying to put them in the chat, <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do that in a bit. Um, yeah, really important reminders. Um, great. All right. Well, I think then that, that we can move forward into our meatiest chunk of today, um, which is first, we're going to talk really briefly about um, our PDSAs, really just a reminder. So we can go to the next slide, please. Um, just a reminder for those that have, of you who've been on here, um, to continue working on your PDSAs, which is your process improvement plans, um, wherever you are in that we've had some really great one-on-one -on -one conversations with some of you and would love to talk with those of you that we haven't already talked with. Um, you know, to, we're, we're here either in office hours or you can set up some some one on one time with with us for whatever works for you um, to talk through, you know, kind of where what's your plan, do, study, act, process improvement um, for your organization. And we can kind of get really nitty gritty on uh, what to try for your specific org. Um, so just a kind of a reminder um, to continue working on that. And then we'll go to the next slide, please which is just a poll to see. We'll do two quick polls um, just for us to kind of gauge where people are at. So the first one is what phase are you in currently in your PDSA? And if you are thinking PDSA, what? What are you talking about? Um, make some time with us because it's something we went over a lot in the first two quarters of this collaborative um, but we'd love, if you're newer to this group, would love to talk through it with you. Um, it's basically a, an approach to improving the way that we do our work. So great, looks like we got some people in plan, some in do, some in act, this is wonderful. Great, all right. Um, and then our next poll is um, what improvement area have you been working on? So, um, you know, there's various stages of the PDSA, but what what's the type of improvement that you are you're working on? Is it around capacity building or data sharing or workflows? Maybe so folks can just take a second to let us know what types of things you're working on in terms of process improvement. All right, looks like pretty much everybody's in in workflows, workflows in process. Yep, that it's a very good place to do a PDSA and very important. So wonderful. All right. Okay. And I see that some folks haven't participated. So um, if you prefer to put it in the chat um, or if it's not uh, if it's not relevant, then that's totally okay. 
All right, so now let's jump into local priorities and stakeholder mapping. So um, if we can go next slide. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is a little exercise around identifying what our priority, what your priorities are for this collaborative. And so part of that is, you know, we don't want to be, we don't want the collaborative, not, nobody wants a collaborative to be duplicative, right? There's so much work already going on. There's, you know, work that the that PHC is leading. There's work that some of the local coalitions are leading. There's work that the, the hospitals and the medical groups are leading. And so, you know, nobody wants to be duplicative. We really want this to be a valuable, a value add, right? A valuable space. So to that end, um, we wanted to go through what we had set out for initially at the beginning. Um, what were the activities? So the what you're seeing here is the activities that we had set out for in the beginning of what the collaborative would work on. And this is kind of our sense of, okay, what are we on target with? What are the things that we probably need to put a little more attention on? Um, and what are the things that we honestly haven't really started? Um, so that's just to give you kind of an idea, but then let's go to the next slide um, because where we really want to focus today is um, around which of all which of all these activities should we focus on in the next quarter and potentially next year. So there we've redivided them into three groups. So the activities that are about workflows the activities that are about capacity building and workforce development, and then the activities that we set out to do that are more around data and reporting. Um, and so what we'd like to ask folks to do, and don't worry, we'll give you a minute to kind of read through these, um, is to put in the chat, if you had to choose five of these to focus on going forward, what would be the five that are most relevant for you or that are most prominent. Um, so just, and just in the chat, you can put the numbers. So, you know, I'm going to say, I think most important to me is number two, number seven, number nine and 10 and 12, let's say. Um, and so just put your numbers in the chat and on the back end, um, our amazing team of Eva and Alexis are going to figure that out in terms of which ones come up the most often. So take some time to just kind of read that slide. And when you're ready, put in the chat, what are your top five activities for your top five priorities would be for this group? Um, hey, this is Andrea. I see yeah. that number five is cut off. Could you mind reading that for me? I think my bar is in the way blocking it. Yeah, no, no problem. It says aggregate and introduce best practices for program delivery. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you to those who've already added. We'll give another couple minutes or moments, <laughs> folks that are still. All right. Is there anybody who needs some more time? 
wanted to add their numbers, but hasn't quite gotten there yet. Okay. Great. All right. Well, in that case, thank you so much. Um, we're going to be figuring that out in the back end because later um, in our discussion, we're going to loop back to this. Um, but for now, let's go to our next slide. Thank you, which is we're going to look at now that we've seen um, Wahoo the, <laughs> thank you, Andrew. <laughs> Um, now that we've seen what our priorities are, let's look at our, the, our current map of stakeholder, local stakeholders. So in terms of who do we already have at our CPI table and who are the many folks that are very involved in this work who aren't necessarily looped in yet, or maybe were looped in at one point and are not anymore. Um, because as we think about how to bring those activities that we've prioritized to life, we really want to make sure that we have all the impacted and right stakeholders at the table, right? So this gives you a sense of um, who are the folks that are kind of already at this Northeast CPI table. Um, the chart on the left has nine ECM or CS providers, and you'll probably see many of yourselves represented there. Um, as well as which um, which counties within the Northeast they're contracted in. And the criteria that we used is if somebody from an organization had attended at least one session of the CPI in the second quarter and at least one session in the third quarter, we we identified we we determined that that would mean, you know, that would sort of be the the definition of consistently being represented. Um oh and I see Ashley. Okay, we've got her. Um so these are sort of the folks that we're seeing, you know, kind of come back session after session. In addition, we've got some other fabulous stakeholders who are not contracted providers, but very much, um, you know, people that are impacted and part of this work. And those you see on the right side. So MedZed, Common Spirit, um, Siskiyou Public Health, and Trinity County. Um, so now let's go to our next slide. And this is going to show us the folks that either haven't been at our table at all, um, or the ones that are bolded are the ones that were that were involved at one point and but haven't been recently involved. Those are the bolded names. And so again, you see at the top is by county, um, which are the contracted ECM and CS providers. Um, and I got some good intel recently that we may be missing some as well. So if you see that there are local, I like that there are stakeholders that are missing from this list altogether, please put them in the chat um, because it's very possible that um, we're also missing additional folks here. For those that are operating in all of the Northeast counties, they're in the purple. And then um, we also have listed here the medical centers, which aren't necessarily contracted for ECM and CS services, but of course are really key players in the healthcare system and with members that are receiving ECM and CS services. Um, and then also this area has a number of local health coalitions, um, some of which are regularly operating, some of which it sounds like, or my understanding is are not currently operating um, or have kind of, you know, calmed down for a little bit. Um, but this is our understanding of kind of who the local players are who might be interested or impacted by some of the work we're doing here, but aren't currently engaged. So I guess one really quick question is, um, are there is there anybody here that you think is either in the wrong category or somebody we're missing? Um, would love for your folks to put that in the chat. We very much um, could use that feedback. And so just kind of look through these, uh, these stakeholders for a moment, just so you get a sense, because it's going to be relevant for our next discussion. Yeah, Doreen, did you want to jump um, in? So I think a couple of things. Um, one, I think we're missing Shingletown Medical Center. Um, it's an FQHC um, from this list. They are out of Shasta. Okay. Um, cool. I also think the Shasta list is um, a number of them, and they're, they're, they're the largest CCM providers are participating 
on the Shasta or the Shark Integrated Care Committee and for the, like the local coalition work. We have a case manager peer network. Um, so there's local kind of really um, long standing efforts going on there. I would say with um, FQHCs, we have been convening the FQHCs, we being me and North Coast, Hank and North Coast Clinics Network, the 15 FQHCs that both of our um, networks service. Um, we have been doing very focused trainings. In fact, last week we did one with West County Health Centers in Sebastopol, um, ECM provider talking to us, sharing best practices from an FQHC perspective. So I'd say um, that the FQHCs who are probably your biggest providers in all these areas, as well as maybe some of the hospital-based clinics would be as well, okay. um, and are kind of doing that. Um, and then I had another point. Um, I think um, the uptick, I know some of these like Mountain Valley's Health Centers is in process with developing contract with partnership. So I think there's some in play and partnership has a really good list of who are contracted, who are underway, et cetera. So I think that's another piece, but they're already participating in some of their trainings. So I think we would have to figure out, um, that's why I like the idea of the regional convening on mm -hmm. October 30th and um, bringing people in various places that are doing this work um, to share their um, uh, you know, kind of experiences doing this. Um, and then Siskiyou County does, Shasta Community Health Center is not in Siskiyou County. You're probably thinking of Shasta Cascade Health Center. Um, that's the one that's out of McLeod. Sorry, say that one more time. I just want to make sure I have the right. <laughs> Sorry, Shasta Community Health Center is only in Shasta County. Got it. Okay. It's not in Siskiyou. It, I think Siskiyou would be um, Shasta Cascade, which you have listed as non-contracted medical centers. Got it. And some of the things we've learned is the uptick has been slower um, or slower in the outlying areas because they're still trying, they don't have as many numbers. They want to really learn from their partners who have done this work, kind of the best practices for staffing. Um, and, you know, kind of the, you know, using use of community health workers versus case managers, having a clear line there, um, et cetera. So I think, you know, we're, we've been sharing all over the place. Um, so I think that's another thing. And then as we've mentioned, or I mentioned in a conversation with you, Gabe, um, and team was the community supports piece is huge um, in the outlying areas. If you're in Bieber or Modoc, you don't have a lot of nonprofits there to provide all the other support services. Yeah. So that's another um, limiting factor. And I'll stop there. No, this is, thank you so much, Doreen. And I'm frantically taking notes and putting mm -hmm. them in the chat just so that everybody um, has them, you know, going forward as well. Because I think you know, both the the work that you've been leading and that Hank has been leading in the area, um, you know, first of all, very impressive and, you know, certainly is a prime example of the kind of work that we want to be amplifying and not trying to duplicate. Um, so thank you for sharing all of that insight and particularly the the pieces where, you know, as those of us who aren't from the, you know, some of those Northeast counties, it's tricky to know um, kind of who's operating where. So really appreciate that. Does anybody else have thoughts? Can I just, can yeah. I just say one other thing? Yeah. The, um, I think the benefit that Shasta County had was we were the whole per involved in the whole person care pilot for seven years yeah. <laughs> before yeah. Cal Aim. So under SHARC, the Shasta Health Assessment Redesign Collaborative, we had the integrated care committee and that committee was the steering committee for the whole person care pilot. So we have just transitioned to now being the steering committee of Cal AIM and, and bringing all folks together around that. Yeah, no, and then, I mean, seven years is a long time, right? That's a lot of really key learnings. And we're still learning. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's never ending. <laughs> mm -mm, no. Yeah. Great. All right, well, so with that, let's, um, let's move forward. Um, let's do our next slide here. 
Um, so we're going to go into some breakout rooms. Um, and the idea being that what we're going to talk through is the we're going to look back at those priorities, those priority activities that you all identified a few moments ago. And for each of for each of the priority activities, we're going to talk through um, kind of what do we already have at the table in terms of assets, knowledge, um, know how, um, all of you know, ability, capacity, um, but also who are the other stakeholders? And I think Doreen's comment about who else has kind of already been really involved in this work is critical. Um, who are those other stakeholders locally who have a lot of that knowledge um, that we could tap into to share those, um, those best practices and, and those learnings? So um, you don't need to do anything. <laughs> you can just sit back and we will put you in one of two breakout rooms just randomly. Um, we're going to have the same discussion. So if you're in one, you're not missing topics in the other. Um, so we will just uh, just hang tight for a minute and you'll be popped into new breakout rooms. So we just have a few minutes to kind of debrief any thoughts um, I know I have a lot of takeaways, but any uh takeaways that or thoughts that people want to share from their debrief or from their uh, breakout room? I mean, yeah, I, I I feel like everyone else did a lot of talking inside of the breakout, so I don't mind giving like a quick summary. Wonderful. All right. <laughs> yeah, there were a lot of interesting topics that came up, um, of which we are. 1000% emphasizing the need for best practices and action and templated workflows um, mm. to reduce administrative burden. Um, but also what's coming up finally in this space as well is being able to have peer mentors that can also provide that guidance um, based off of their newly developed experiences within CalAIM, right? Like at the start of the work, we didn't really have those best practices, but now everyone is starting to build up that experience. And there were some really great questions surrounding um, nuanced uh, uses of funding and how like there are needs on the ground that funding doesn't quite yet reflect. And so it's like, oh, wow. Okay. Like these are necessary to program delivery, but right now, essentially it hasn't reached the point of being like a funding, uh, mm -hmm. like approved under funding, like author, or it hasn't been authorized for a use of funding. And so being able to advance those conversations. Um, and we also were able to discuss, um, just up oh, there goes that word again that word just um data um and best practices regarding data mm -hmm. um and how it's how it's been very incredible uh, supportive that there has been an increase in the number of webinars that are available today as compared to previously so also wanting to prioritize streamlining data reporting so yeah some really really good things here yeah we our group focused on the same <laughs> the uh I think one of the takeaways that I had was that there's so much already happening locally in terms of sharing of best practices that our role is less about maybe needing to identify those best practices and more about amplifying um, the sharing that's already occurring and finding ways to, while some of the work is very is very localized by county, some of the work can be more regionalized. Um, and so kind of kind of expanding those the the learnings that are already happening, like expanding the reach of that. Um, yeah, and then really, we also talked about, uh, sorry, <laughs> Alexis, well, I, I really like something that Samantha said as well. Um, it was um something along the lines of, Sorry, I'm looking at my notes. Something along the lines of those back those best practices, you know, like we're available being like transitioned into like a process, right? Like mm -hmm. this is like the generalized best practice. Oh, we do that, but how do you do it? Mm -hmm. The yeah. nitty gritty. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The specificity. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And then the other big piece for us was the the find, you know, just the recognition that the data and reporting and the administrative tasks involved in capturing all of the data and then submitting it and dealing like then there's so many duplicative systems um just how burdensome and difficult that is and um that there's really a desire to figure out what are the best systems that could integrate with an EHR what are the best practices around kind of what's the easiest and most streamlined way to do data collection um, do you use an admin coordinator type of person that works with the case manager? You know, 
um, kind of trying to figure out what those, the best way of using the dollars you have for the type of staff you have also, um, which I think is, is something I was sharing that I have heard echoed <laughs> in the conversations that other regions are having as well. So this is in no way a Northeast problem. This is a statewide problem for sure. Uh, but doesn't mean that we can't keep looking for solutions and certainly we'll share, please share any that you come across. Yeah. And then also just a quick plug for everyone to remember that the TA marketplace is also a resource and it's, you know, all projects are fully funded. Um, and is it possible just to get like a quick show of hands, um, virtual hands that is, is there anyone that has, um, already been funded through the TA marketplace for, a TA project? We do. Vision so, of the Cross. Yes, Andrea, yes. Yeah. And is there anyone else that's been funded through is the TA marketplace? Applied, but maybe. So, okay. Yeah, so I think that's also one where we can be kind of more uplifting the that resource. Um, yeah, because I know some of the conversation points that we held today can definitely be addressed through that um, funding that's available. So just wanted to consistently yeah. drop that yeah that reference um yeah and I can go back to doing my job with screen sharing <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much Alexis any other thoughts from folks as part of a debrief for my group did it, did we accurate was that accurately captured are there any key key points you wanted to make sure we got shared um, great. Well, so our big call to action for today is for the regional convening that we're doing next month. Um, so please RSVP, the link is there, and please share that link widely. <laughs> so if there are any local stakeholders, any stakeholders that you think would be interested, um, please share it. We will also have an invite with a QR code um, to that to that RSVP link coming out soon. Um, and yeah, so the it's RSVP yourself, hopefully. And then also please uh, distribute widely and invite others, encourage others um, to attend. You have something I put together like a little invite um, in, e in an email with this that we can invite. We have our integrated care committee next week. So I wanna okay. send it to them. Yes, absolutely. So I'm just waiting back to hear from the partnership um, co communications team has oh. been, it, that's where it's currently stuck. Yeah. Um, so I think I just need approval from them to distribute it because it has their logo on it. Um, but as soon okay. as I get that, and I'll follow up with Danielle again, I think I'm actually seeing her later on today. So uh, we'll follow up with that. Um, okay, because I can yeah. share it. Yeah, because once we get approval on that, then um, we'll update the QR code. It'll all be ready to go. And then that way it's an easy like email forward. And if we don't hear back from T, um, I would just say go on without it. And if you can come, great. We'll add them later or something. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. All right. Well, I will hand over to Eva to wrap us up here. Thanks, Gabrielle. Um, so we're just going to go over a few next steps, um, thinking ahead to uh, the next session. Um, so we have one more poll today. Uh, we just want to hear from you about what section of today's session was most valuable. Was it A, the resource updates, um, B, process improvement and the PDSA overview, C, our discussion about priorities for the Northeast CPI, um, or the discussion about stakeholder mapping for the Northeast. So just take a moment and identify which section was most valuable. This helps kind of inform future sessions that we have. We wanna make sure that um, the content that we're providing is the most helpful as possible. All right, so it looks like our priorities discussion um, for most people it was the most valuable um, part of the session today. So thank you for giving that feedback. And the next slide, please. Um, so ahead of session 10, um, please make sure uh, that you RSVP to our in-person session in Reading. Um, I just put the link in the chat so you can go ahead and use that. 
Um, continue working on your PDSA. Uh, please, please feel free to come to office hours or make an appointment with us if the office hours um, don't work for your schedule. We'd love to help you work through your PDSA, brainstorm together. Um, our next office hours is on Tuesday, October 3rd at 2 p.m., and then um, for November, it'll be Tuesday, November 7th at 2 p.m. The Zoom link is there. Um, so please feel free to um, stop by and um, let us know how we can support. Next slide, please. And as always, we just want to give um, a big thanks to everyone for coming today. And then also to our um, our internal Health Begins team, as well as Gabrielle Altriche. Thank you all so much for joining. Um, please don't forget to RSVP, send that out to your networks, and we're so excited to see you in person next month. Have a great day, everyone. Awesome. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.